We're going to start a new topic today. In some ways, this is a return to the more fundamental parts of Java. We'll be talking about something called Java monitor objects. And Java monitor objects have been around for a long time. They were originally part of the Java 1.0 release. And we'll talk about what a monitor is. We'll explain how Java provides built-in support for monitor objects that implement something called the monitor object pattern. And we'll show how we use this to provide both mutual exclusion and coordination between threads that are trying to access critical sections within objects. And I'll also give you a human known use of monitors as well. So a monitor is a synchronization mechanism that's been around for a very long time. It was originally devised in the early 1970s. So that's pretty much the, the dawn of modern computing. And it provides three primary capabilities to concurrent programs. Number one, it ensures that only one thread at a time can have mutually exclusive access to a critical section. So we'll have this little notation. You'll see this over and over again. We'll have a critical section, which is this little box here. As you can see, there's only one thread at a time that can be in there running. Other threads who want to get in the critical section have to block waiting their chance to get in and have exclusive access to the resources, typically the fields and so on, inside the critical section. Threads running in a monitor can block awaiting certain conditions to become true. So this is actually very similar to the condition object stuff we talked about before, although a little bit more limited in many ways. We'll talk about that. So when you're blocked waiting on the condition, you step outside of the critical section but you haven't entirely left the monitor object uh, complex, if you will. So there's kind of like a waiting room. I'll talk more about that later. So this guy's waiting on this condition. And now thread T2 is inside the critical section, and, and it's running. And then the third thing that you can do with a monitor object is a, one thread can notify one or more threads that the conditions they're waiting on have been met. And of course, we'll see later, may have been met by the time the threads wake up. And, and come back around again and get a chance to go back in. So as you see here, we were blocked. Thread T1 was blocked waiting on the condition. It got notified somehow. And then this thread comes back in. And now he's running again inside the, the critical section. OK, so those are the three primary capabilities that a monitor provides. All Java objects can be used as built-in monitor objects. So keep in mind, what's a Java object? So an int is not a Java object. A long is not a Java object. But pretty much anything that has a class definition can be a monitor object. And there's two types of thread synchronization that are supported on these things. Mutual exclusion, which is what we we're just talking about, which makes sure that you can get exclusive access to the object's state. And that's done through synchronized methods or statements. And it turns out that every Java object has something called an intrinsic lock associated with it. And there's this funny thing called an entrance queue that's used to kind of queue up threads that want to get exclusive access to the innards of the monitor object. And we'll see how that all works in a second. So Java's execution environment, you know, the virtual machine or whatnot, provides that implementation. It's actually, we'll talk about how it's done later. It's, it's done using um, native code typically written in C or C++. And then the second thing you can do with the Java built-in monitor object is coordination. You can make sure that threads run in the right order. They run at the right time. They run under the right conditions. Those are the three sorts of things that a co coordination does. And it's just kind of saying, it's your turn. No, it's my turn. No, it's your turn. No, it's my turn. You can kind of coordinate and see who gets to run and when. And in order to do that, every monitor object has something called a wait queue. And so there's a it's not really called this, but there's an intrinsic condition that's associated with every Java object slash monitor object. And once again, the Java's execution environment, the JVM, supports the coordination mechanisms using this wait queue and some notification mechanisms. And I'll talk a bit more about how this works under the hood. Think at a high level, this is kind of like having a condition object associated with every object. That's sort of what's going on here, although it's not implemented quite that way, but that's the basic idea. And these mechanisms implement a variant of something called the monitor object pattern. So if you take a look at this link, it's a link to a paper I wrote a really, really long time ago, probably 20 years ago, 
20 years ago, I guess it was. And this appeared in the POSA 2 book, and it's called the Monitor Object Pattern. And the intent of this pattern is to ensure that only one method runs within an object, and it allows the object's methods to cooperatively schedule their execution sequences, so coordination. So mutual exclusion and coordination. That's what the monitor object pattern is all about. All right, so what are some examples of monitor-like things? Well, so one example, it's a little bit far-fetched, but it's not too far off the, the mark, is an operating room in a hospital. So you can imagine you've got an operating room in the hospital, and what you have is you have a, a place you come and check in. So you have to come in and maybe fill out some paperwork, or maybe they're going to you know, check your vital signs or whatnot. And so you come in here, and you, you don't actually go directly into the operating room. You kind of wait in the, in the check-in room. And then one patient at a time comes into the operating room. So you have sort of exclusive access. Or actually, really, the, the doctors have exclusive access to you. Uh, and so you're in the operating room, and only one patient is in the operating room at a time. You might have you know, multiple uh, doctors. Well, let's say there's just one doctor. Make it easy. So the patient comes in. They're in the operating room. And then let's say that there's, a, there's some reason why they can't make any further progress. They got part of the, the surgery done or the operation done, and then they have to wait for the person to heal or whatnot. So you can put them off in a waiting room, and uh, they wait there for their next chance to come back and finish the operation. Meanwhile, because the operating room is a, is a busy place, they go ahead and bring the next person in and start to operate on them. So the idea is there's only one person being operated on at a time. When the surgery can't make any progress because you have to you know, get a blood transfusion or whatever, you go off to the waiting room and wait. And then when you're all done, it, you leave and you go on your way. So that's kind of the idea. OK, so that's a quick overview of what monitors are, a little tiny overview of what Java supports in terms of Java built-in monitor objects. And uh, we'll go and talk about all these things in more detail in a second.